Okay, so <clears throat> today I wanted to do a video about the whole obsession with Casey Anthony and um, the daughter that she was recently acquitted of uh, murdering. I understand why people are outraged at the verdict because just from the coverage that I've seen of it, it, it really did seem like people had good reasons to think that she was guilty, and I can only assume that um, the jury made their decision um, based on the fact that whatever evidence that they were presented in court they, they found inconclusive or at least not enough to warrant um, convicting her beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, but really the main thing that I wanted to talk about was not specifically that case, but why I think that the American media and so many American people are so fixated on it. It seems odd to me in a way simply because I think about all the children around the world that uh, starve to death every day. Um, or, you know, all the children that are, are physically and sexually abused. Um, it, it just... I, I really think that the reason that so many people are upset about the whole Casey, Casey Anthony and Kaylee situation is that um, I really think it has to do with a lot of... Um, psychological projection that's going on. Um, I, I have, I think, talked in, in previous videos about um, the, pho the phenomenon of sociopathy and how um, sociopaths tend to rise to power in a lot of situations and how, um, basically, I believe that our our entire government and our entire financial system is, is sociopathic in nature simply because it emphasizes um, money and profits and accumulating wealth over um, human life itself, not to mention the quality of human life for um, other people. And I really think that children suffer a lot because of the, the low priority that they are given um, I've done uh, some, some YouTube watching videos over the weekend and come across some um, men's rights groups that are basically complaining about um, being forced in to paying child support for children that they didn't want and how, um, you know, that, that women are responsible, basically solely responsible for um, out of wedlock -like births and, and the fact that they're so much more prevalent than they used to be. But I, I really think that men and women bear equal responsibility in that, and um, the fact that women a lot of times want to blame men, um, you know, maybe for abandonment or for, you know, promising the world to get a woman into bed and then, um, you know, just abandoning her or hooking up with somebody else, you know, when the going got rough and not being around to be a father, you know, like maybe they said that they would. I've, I've certainly known plenty of situations like that, and I've also known plenty of situations where a man was basically entrapped into parenthood in the sense that maybe they thought that the woman was on birth control or um, they thought that, you know, she was favorable to having an abortion if she did get pregnant, um, that kind of thing. But, um, you know, 
regardless of, of who's responsible for what, and I, I personally don't even care so much about marriage um, myself, um, I think that it can be an indication of people's commitment to family and children, but it doesn't have to be. Um, I think that there are certainly plenty of single parents out there that do a really good job raising their kids, and at the same time there are plenty of two-parent, you know, traditional households that, um, you know, inflict horrible abuse upon their children and neglect and, um, and that kind of thing. Um, me personally, I grew up in a two-parent household until I was 15, but um, it certainly wasn't anything to to brag about. Um, I know a lot of other people had it worse than me, but um, I did feel neglected and resented, and I really think that the the low priority that children are given in our society is is an indication of how um, well I shouldn't say an indication is a consequence of the way our economic system works. Um, you you're rewarded for for being selfish and um, cutthroat and competitive in a lot of instances um, more so than for for being giving and cooperative. I ran across the thread over the weekend, um, or basically a someone who's a, I guess promise, prominent lecturer on business was talking about um, toxic work environments for women and how um, about how in in some cases women feel. You know, like if they're in, say, male-dominated industries, a lot of times women feel shut out from a lot of the male camaraderie that goes on. Um, and some of the comments were really what got my attention. I guess some of them were, were talking about how, you know, business has been over backwards to accommodate women and... Um, how the wage gap is a myth, which <laughs> the whole wage gap thing is an indication of how um, what a low priority child care and um, just caretaking in general is given in our society. Um, according to things that I've read, um, you know, and I would agree with the idea that that women are not uh, discriminated against per se um, because they're women uh, or um, you know paid less you know across the board just because they're women but they are punished for the fact that they are often expected to more so than men um, take care of family obligations, and that means taking care of their children, siblings, parents, nieces, nephews, grandchildren. Um, it tends to be women more so than men that do that kind of thing, and so in a workplace that's competitive, you would definitely expect for men to, to come out better and gain economic advantage by not having those distractions and those responsibilities to worry about. Um, like I said, getting back to the whole Casey Anthony verdict, I I think the reason that there there's so much fascination and fixation on it is because people know that our, on, on some level, that our society and our culture is toxic. Um, very anti-family, very anti-children, um, and it's it, it's easy to fixate on somebody else's problems um, instead of trying to to ask yourself, 
you know, what can I do in my life to make sure that the children that I know are better taken care of. But if we're going to survive as a society, as a country, as a civilization in general, I think that we really need to get back to the basics of what is really important in life and it isn't accumulating wealth and it isn't getting the top you know to the top of your profession whatever profession you happen to be in um to me the most important thing in life is my children i i just can't imagine my life without them and They've always been the most important thing to me, and maybe it's because I was put in daycare myself when I was uh, six weeks old until the time I was ten, and I, I really, you know, both my parents worked full time, you know, and they weren't rich, they were just middle class, they were just, you know, struggling to pay the mortgage and to get by, they weren't, you know, driving BMWs, um, You know, it, it shouldn't be that way. People shouldn't have to sacrifice so much financial security just to make sure that their kids are well well taken care of. And to me, it's the height of sociopathic insanity to... go out and get a job where you're earning sixty, hundred thousand dollars a year, let's say, uh, and then you have to turn around and, and pay somebody else, what, twenty, twenty five thousand dollars maybe a year to take care of your kid and that's being generous compared to what a lot of uh, child care workers make. Getting back to the video that I saw about um, how the business world has been over backwards to accommodate women and it's women's fault that um, you know, if they're not stepping up to the plate and earning as much as men, um, but some of the comments, not the actual video that I saw, but some of the comments were basically saying that, it was basically saying that, you know, um, the female-dominated industries, you know, they tended to be highly government-subsidized, but, you know, what are we talking about? We're talking about teaching and nursing and you know, working in a nursing home, which I did myself um, for several months, and to me, it, it is really an indication of a sick society when, you know, when people that are, are being paid to educate and to take care and guide children, and, you know, not to mention take care of elderly people that, you know, are, are too too feeble or too weak-minded to take care of themselves, um, you know, the fact that those people are, are the ones really struggling to get by and make minimum wage while you have, you know, Wall Street brokers making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, you know, and we wonder why our society is, is so screwed up, and we, you know, we want to talk about family values, I mean... I just, anyway, that that was my whole thought on the, the Casey Anthony verdict and the, the outrage after the fact. I, I just think that, not that people shouldn't be outraged about it, but that there are so many other more pressing child welfare issues that are on so much more of a broader scale that people could focus their outrage on. And it might require, you know, some change and some sacrifice and some work, but ultimately I think that it would be worth it. And, you know, I would really like to to have a better society for my children than the one that I grew up in. So, thank you and have a great day.